record budget. That's 5.02 trillion pesos. So that's higher by 11.5% than what has been allotted for the year. Be that as it may, is that boost in budget enough to stimulate growth for an ailing economy or economic managers being modest yet again? Uh, I think uh, if the question is if it's enough, yes, uh, uh, considering that we are facing a lot of uh, challenges in terms of our collections because we are uh, we are still recovering. So uh, ma many of our small and medium enterprises are still uh, struggling to get back to business. So uh, with that anticipated um, lower uh, lower tax revenues, uh, it's um, it's not worthy. Uh, for DBM to, to really uh, uh, put forward um, a huge increase in the budget for 2022. And I think uh, this should sustain uh, our our growth recovery uh, that started uh, in, in Q1 no? and actually uh, highlighted by the quarter two of the, this year. So um, if it's enough, I think it's enough. Uh, and considering, for example, no, that uh, 2022, we have to take note that 2022 is the first year of the implementation of the Supreme Court ruling on the Bandanas Garcia cases. So meaning mm -hmm. uh, there will be less uh, money for the national government and more for the local government. So uh, so it's, it's very surprising that uh, national government has actually maintained uh, a lot of allocations in health in infrastructure, uh, despite the, the reduced amount or reduced uh, share in uh, the in the tax uh, allotment, so uh, I think this should carry us uh, through uh, in uh, trying to stimulate our economy all the way to 2022. Okay, well, like what you mentioned, it is enough. But when you try to compare it to past figures, it somehow pales in comparison. For example, back in 2017, if I have my figures uh, figures uh, correct, uh, increase in the 2017 budget was at 23%, and much of that, in fact, was also allocated for infrastructure spending. Is this a level that we should at least be considering um, at this stage, especially considering that we are in the middle of a health crisis? Yes, uh, I think it's a it's a very delicate balancing act uh, by our by our national government, especially by the DBM. No, I, I wouldn't want to be a DBM uh, executive right now. No, on one hand, you you don't want to get into debt problems like what you have just reported. No, thirteen trillion is roughly around. Uh, it will breach more than sixty percent of our debt to GDP ratio. So you don't want to get into trouble uh, on on this uh, debt trap. But at the same time, you want to increase more. No? So uh, our budget for for stimulus or, or stimulating the economy. So uh, getting into a double digit growth rate is uh, decent enough uh, to make that uh, middle ground on balance, mm -hmm. uh, stimulating the economy. But at the same time, you want to you 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 don't want to uh, to be uh, imprudent uh, in terms of uh, passing on to the next administration a huge debt problem. So uh, so that would be. Uh, but if I may if I may note, no, a lot of these uh, items are going to the local government units, and in, we're talking about stimulating the economy and uh, big bang uh, for the buck. Uh, we, I have to uh, emphasize no, that the national government, especially the infrastructure agencies, DWH and DOTR, must work hand in hand with uh, these LGUs. Uh, so to convince them, no, uh, it's, uh, it's they are autonomous; they can do whatever they want with that additional budget. But uh, I, uh, my bias is uh, spend that money, that additional money, at least no, for the most part, to infrastructure development because those have huge multiplier effects to the to the economy if we want to really recover together i think the national government and the local government units must uh must talk to each other and must work closer together in terms of this national local infrastructure uh development and so we maximize the short-term multiplier effect and at the same time building a long-term uh, capacity for our uh, national economy